Donc, chers amis, bonjour, rebonjour, merci d'être présent. C'est la deuxième leçon de cuisine de la journée, donc après, après nos amis britanniques, nous allons accueillir une équipe talentueuse, puisque la majorité d'entre vous ont pu voir hier soir un épisode de Real Humans. Et je vais vous demander d'applaudir dans l'ordre Stéphane Baron, qui est Baron, le SVP. Henry Quinman, qui est producteur de Matador Films, c'est le producteur de Matador Films, qui est donc la société qui a produit en coproduction avec SVT euh, la série dont nous allons parler. Lars Lundstrom, qui est créateur et, euh, je dirais, actionnaire euh, de Matador, créateur de la série. Harald Amrel, qui est le réalisateur. Harald. Les deux des comédiennes qui nous font le plaisir d'être là avec nous, Lisette Pagler et Pia Anderson. Voilà, euh, pour votre confort personnel, à la différence de Jean-Marc, je poserai les questions en français majoritairement parce que je n'ai pas son aisance et je crois que ce sera, ça évitera des, des quiproquos. Euh, je voulais dire à quel point nous sommes heureux de vous accueillir. Euh, à quel point nous avons tous apprécié la qualité de votre travail et plus généralement depuis quelques années à quel point nous apprécions la qualité du travail des, des équipes scandinaves I would like to thank you for the quality of your works together so uh, for a few years now we appreciate more and more Scandinavian production either in uh, novels you know or TV and uh, year by year you are growing up and now you are a kind of major characters in the in all the, the world of series and it's very fine for us. I do think that we have a lot of things to learn from your experience. That's what we are going to, to do today. Let's be very very free and speak of general things and typical things. And we're gonna see what happens. Okay. <laughs> Can I just say something? Uh, I'm very proud to be here, I'm happy to be proud to be here, and I want to thank here the organization for a very, very nice party last night. Mm. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. J'aimerais qu'on commence par, quelques, par un, petit, un, un petit portrait général de, de, la, de la production en Suède, à savoir, est-ce que Stéphane, euh, vous qui travaillez pour la SVT, donc qui est une chaîne euh, suédoise, vous pouvez en, en quelques mots euh, nous dire combien de chaînes vous avez, euh, quel est le volume, non pas le volume de production de manière très précise, mais par exemple combien de soirées de fiction vous avez sur vos chaînes par semaine. I'll try. Uh, there are five, three TV channels. Uh, SVT we have two, SVT one and two. Uh, there's TV four, which is our main competitor, and there's TV three and channel. Okay. Uh, we we uh, the our two channels. Uh, SVT One is the biggest channel in Sweden. We have a share of uh, thirty five percent. TV Four is the second largest one. They have a share of forty uh, thirty. And then SVT Two has ten. TV Three twelve fifteen and Channel Five around fifteen. And uh, the. Our two channels, well, the SVT One is our main channel where we air all the uh, the broad uh, productions, and we have uh, two slots for drama Sundays night and uh, Mondays night, mm -hmm. and TV Four has they don't do as much drama as we do, but they air their drama or their crime at nine o'clock Sunday night, so we compete at the same slot on Sunday nights, and. Um, it's only we, SVT and TV4, that has a sort of uh, general output of drama. Uh, uh, TV3 does such once in a while, they do sitcoms. And, uh, but we hear rumors that they might go into production. And as a producer, we do, of course, hope that they will commission dramas. Yeah, we, we all hope. We, we really, really need more drama. Uh, and we would love more competition. Um, one could say that uh, 
for the last 10 years, it's been SVT and TV4 that has done drama, but I'd say that we do approximately five times as much in volume. We have an output, whether it's in-house productions or whether it's co-productions with other companies, we have an output of four series every year. Uh, and we and there's a series of about 10 or 12 episodes. Apart from that, we do four or five mini-series every year. And we do one sitcom here, one season. And the season in Sweden, the sitcom season in Sweden is uh, 13 episodes. TV4 does, um, I'd say that they do uh, crime based on, on novels. They do crime franchises like Wallander. And they do other miniseries based on books. And they do very successfully, they do sitcoms. Bien. Quand, quand vous dites sitcom, par exemple, quel est, quel est l'horaire de prime time Quel est le prime time pour euh, quel est le prime time pour la diffusion Est-ce que les sitcoms sont en diffusion l'après-midi Et la troisième question dans ce que vous avez dit, vous dites en coproduction. Est-ce que ça veut dire que les chaînes suédoises font des productions propres ou elles, elles font tout en coproduction, en véritable coproduction et non pas en commande uh, That was two questions. I'm sorry, yeah. I lost one. Uh, no, that's okay. Uh, what when we do, when I say co-production or in-house production, I'd say that 40% of uh, the money we put into drama SVT, 40% goes to the in-house productions, and the rest is uh, produced by external companies, and that's what I mean, and then we are co-producers in those productions. TV4, they don't have any in-house production at all. Ce qui veut dire qu'en interne, vous avez des producteurs artistiques, c'est-à-dire que vous avez des personnes qui développent pour vous des sujets et qui font, je dirais, euh, le, le même travail que Henrik, c'est-à-dire qui font des recherches et qui développent la chose en interne et qui sont des personnes qui travaillent pour vous à l'année, c'est ça When I say in-house, I mean more in the factory sense, that we have the production facilities and that we have uh, less and less, that we have production personnel. The ideas always comes from authors. We are totally dependent on authors, as are the production companies. Uh, in the case of Real Humans, the production company is the two guys sitting next to me. One of them is the author, and Henry is one of the best producers in Sweden. He worked for us. That's where you got to know how to do it. Um, so, well, you, you can say that the history in Sweden is that, that most of the production drama genre, or most jobs, was produced in-house at SVT, uh, but for six, seven years or something like that, we are drifting in a direction where more and more is produced outside. And I guess that more, uh, well, maybe you should say how much, <laughs> I, I, I hope that we, we will produce even more in the future outside, of course. Yeah, just to give you short history. Uh, in the 80s, there was no competition. There were no other channels. Uh, well, everything was produced by SVT. They were uh, directors and writers on the payroll. Today, and I'd say that for the last four years, we've taken very big steps in diminishing our uh, the resources that we sit on. And so we're moving towards a situation where we look at the, let's say, 25-30% of our, well, I'm talking drama, not, not everything else, 25% uh, would be what we would actually produce ourselves. When, and when I say producer, I mean the main producer as a production company. Donc, alors, pour rebondir justement Stéphane, vous, vous parlez de l'apparition d'un secteur privé depuis quelques années. Euh, Henry, c'est ça qui vous a donné envie de créer Matador, puisque vous m'avez dit tout à l'heure que Matador est une relativement jeune société. Comment est né Matador Well, um, it was what I would say that, that Real Humans uh, made Matador for me. Uh, Lars and I met a couple of years ago. Uh, we had a lunch. Lars, I asked Lars, do you have any good ideas? <laughs> well, yeah, it's a bad idea, it's another one good idea. And, and, um, and we started to discuss that, and then after a couple of months, uh, the, the discussion got deeper, and, and we decided to, to start up uh, Matador Film. And we have been around for about a little more, a little bit more than two years. Since the end of 2009, so we are a pretty new founded company. In Sweden, there are a lot of production companies, I would say, compared to the, what we 
possibilities to, to make a production, the ground of the <laughs> We have one uh, commissioning uh, uh, one and a half. Yeah, SVT and yeah. TV. Uh, can I ask on, on a note on that? Uh, when, 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 when Lars uh, came with the idea, we actually did the first day, we did with Lars as a writer when you were constructing Matador film. Uh, so, so we've been sort of following Matador with real humans. We hope a lot in the future for Matador film. And we have several other projects in development right now with them. Donc, comment, comment ça se passe, euh, Henrik et Lars, quand on est, le, une, une, on est une jeune société, on est des créateurs, et on va voir la grande chaîne nationale, et on a envie de vendre son projet. Alors, quelles sont les relations Qui vous allez voir, par exemple Vous êtes allé voir Stéphane directement, ou vous vous adressez à, à je dirais, à un, un directeur de la fiction dans la chaîne ou, euh, comment, comment, ils, comment sont structurés les rapports entre une, une, une entreprise privée de production et la chaîne Après, on parlera de la manière dont, dont la série, mais plus généralement, comment sont structurés les rapports Est-ce qu'il y a des bureaux différents auxquels vous pouvez vous adresser Est-ce que chaque bureau a une spécialisation C'est-à-dire, est-ce qu'il y aura un conseiller de programme pour les policiers, un conseiller de programme pour les physiciens Comment c'est charpenté cette histoire C'est une petite communauté, nous savons tous. Nous sommes, dans ce cas, directement à Stéphane, qui est le et il était commissionné person in the uh, in, uh, SVT. Sure. Uh, yeah? Yeah. Uh, the, just to give you a rough idea of the organization, there is, of course, a commissioning editor for drama. He's actually drama, culture, and short documentaries. There are, there's one director of program. There are five commissioning editors, and there are 10 heads of programs. And in Stockholm, five of those 10 heads of programs are in Stockholm, because the turnover in Stockholm is the biggest one. And there's two in Malmö, two in Gotham, and one in Umeå up north. With the, and I'm one of those ten. We, it's the ten that talk to the five, and the decisions are made by the director. Remember, there's nobody else involved in the decisions, just to give, which is very different from, well, of course, different from the big countries in Europe, but it's very different from Denmark and Norway and Finland as well. There are much more layers of decision makers in those countries. We're very, very proud of our very flat organization in that sense. Well, when, when the four of us are, are describing this this relationship, it might sound a little bit like uh, Sweden is a kind of a banana republic, because uh, I, I used to work as producer at SVT. I was at a production for, for a couple of years, and then I went outside. Uh, I've been working with Harald at SVT, and with Stefan, and I worked with, with, with Lars, 10, 15 years ago, so we know each other quite well. Sweden is a small country, and the industry in Sweden is, is small. It's it's good in, in some ways, but of course it's, it's a small market. So, so, so it was a problem. Yes, yeah. Est-ce qu'il y a euh, est-ce qu'il y a une stabilité, je dirais, dans, dans vos interlocuteurs C'est-à-dire, est-ce que, par exemple, les gens qui travaillent à SVT sont les mêmes depuis longtemps Est-ce que, quand vous dites que vous vous connaissez tous, il y a des avantages et des inconvénients C'est d'abord des relations de confiance, ou ça peut être aussi parfois étouffant parce qu'on se connaît tellement qu'il n'y aura pas de surprise Well, well to be completely honest, uh, they change their positions all the time, but it's. <laughs> I don't want to be rude here, but I don't always there. Uh, he's always there in different positions. Très bien. Bon, on va, on va passer plus spécifiquement maintenant à, à, à la genèse de, de cette série. Donc, euh, Henrik et, et Lars, vous avez cette idée. Euh, vous allez voir Stéphane. Stéphane, qui est un des, un des décideurs du pays, fait remonter l'idée dans sa hiérarchie. Il y a une décision qui est prise de développer cette chose. À partir du moment où la décision est prise de se développer, quelles sont les relations C'est-à-dire, est-ce que, je dirais, les, les, tout le monde s'interroge beaucoup, par exemple en France, sur euh, la manière d'améliorer les stades de pré-production C'est-à-dire la genèse du projet, le développement, à quel moment on a l'impression que le projet est assez mûr pour le mettre en production Comment, comment ça se passe entre vous Est-ce qu'il y a beaucoup de discussions préliminaires avant l'écriture, par exemple, sur le fond des choses, sur qu'est-ce qu'on cherche, qu'est-ce qu'on veut est-ce que vous, Stéphane, dans votre chaîne, est-ce qu'on appelle des lignes éditoriales C'est-à-dire qu'à un moment, vous recherchez plutôt tel type de programme que tel autre, et ces modes, on peut dire, peuvent changer au fil du temps Ou est-ce que c'est sujet par sujet, c'est-à-dire c'est coup de cœur par coup de cœur Nous avons un 
obvious or we have a very clear vision or strategy of, in this case, how we want to, to develop the four series per year that we want to show the audience. And we have the strategies that two of them could be crime, suspense, and two sort of drama, drama. Uh, this idea uh, was a little dif different, <laughs> to say the least. And uh, when uh, Lars and Henry came with the idea to me, I think they, I, I know that they know that I'm an old sci-fi nerd. Uh, I grew up on Asimov. I know the laws of robotics like better than anything else. So, so, so uh, it was really something that, that, that fitted me. And I was very sure that we had to develop it on our own, on the development budget that we had to take it quite to, to bring it into a stage where uh, Annie Miguelis, our director of program and our commissioner and the commissioning board was to see because if I had gone up with it saying we want to do a robot show or a sci-fi show, they would have said no. So we we uh, made a deal uh, writing the scripts, uh, just to give you a rough idea, which was during 2010. And we made a pilot, uh, an eight minute pilot, or actually, sorry, Matador, we made a pilot. We made a pilot. Yeah. We worked with concept uh, visualizers and uh, several visualizers actually to, to, to find out the, the, the precise style for quite a long time, I would say. And, and, and we got Harald Hamrell on board pretty early uh, after half a year or something. Uh, because as Stefan Harald is kind of a sci fi nerd uh, himself. And Harald is the ça veut dire deux choses parce que est-ce que vous vous êtes posé la question du danger d'un programme de science-fiction par exemple en prime time La science-fiction est quand même un genre qui n'est pas évidemment fédérateur. Donc quand on décide de faire ça, il y a un risque par rapport au public, ça c'est une première question. Et puis après on reviendra à, à, à ce qui m'a ébloui hier, c'est la qualité de la direction artistique plus précisément. Donc on va revenir à ça après. Mais une dernière question sur ça, sur comment un diffuseur décide de prendre un risque sur un, un type de programme qui n'est pas forcément un genre fédérateur Yeah, I don't really know the answer to that. Uh, I'm convincing, they are convincing Lars and Harl. Harl is one of the greatest directors in Sweden. Lars is the greatest writer. And I'd say that Lars, everybody knows Lars' writing. is very, very, very specific and tells you stories about mankind, whatever he does. So, so, so that was really the faith that we, if I had in it, that it would not be a, an ordinary sci-fi show, and it's not. And, and, and the process of taking it quite slowly, step by step. I mean, uh, people have the possibility to read uh, thoughts from Lars and from Harald and, and uh, see the visual, visualization we did and, and uh, see the pilot and, and, and really feel this got to the heart. Uh, and I think that made SVT secure. Not everybody at the, at the same time, but, but uh, it was really But without uh, Stefan's guts to uh, believe in it, we haven't been able to do it. So it was a, a good uh, coexisting uh, relationship with our creativity, Stefan's guts, and, and our, our, our uh, development process, which was, uh, I think, very organic to the project. But there's been a lot of gaps in this project. I'd say that Andrew is our director of program, because without going into the financing situation, but it, it, it was difficult to convince our Scandinavian partners and our ZDF, who we usually co-produce crime with, it was difficult for them to, to, to commit themselves to this. So SED took actually, when we relighted it, we took the, the, the hundred percent out together with Matador, because they had a big stake in this. You didn't need to kick me, um, and uh, we, 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 we financed it ourselves together with Matador without any money. So there is a lot of guys about me as well. Henry Kamlar, ça veut dire que en même temps que vous écrivez ou avant même d'écrire, vous vous réfléchissez beaucoup à, à, à la charte visuelle, au, au style, c'est-à-dire au design de la série. Ce qui est frappant dans cette série. Euh, ce qui est frappant, c'est ça, c'est que c'est de la science-fiction, mais en même temps, il y a une énorme humanité, et que souvent l'humanité passe devant la science-fiction, et c'est ça qui en fait un programme, à mon avis, euh, euh, admirable.
rapport tout le monde. Et la deuxième chose, c'est le contrôle, c'est-à-dire le sentiment que le moindre caddie a une couleur particulière, que, que, que tout est travaillé, il y a une charte des couleurs, il y a une charte des accessoires, il y a un travail sur, on parlera après avec les comédiennes, mais le travail sur les... Enfin tout ça, est-ce que c'est un travail qui, est, qui se fait avant l'écriture, et à un moment vous commencez à écrire quand vous avez décidé quelle serait la la couleur au sens général de votre film ou ça se fait parallèlement à l'écriture qui, qui a le final cut là-dessus par exemple, parce qu'il faut quand même euh, je ne suis pas sûr que la Suède soit quand même le paradis là, de nous raconter des choses merveilleuses où tout le monde s'entend super bien il n'y a jamais de bataille Ah oui, c'est vrai qu'il y a eu des accords mais il y a eu beaucoup de questions là <laughs> uh, to, to begin at the start, I had the idea for the series for Real Humans some maybe seven years ago. Uh, it popped up in my head from somewhere, I don't know where, where from. Uh, and I couldn't really uh, get around how, how to do it, how to realize it. Uh, it seemed impossible in Sweden because of the genre. Uh, it maybe would fit in. United States or something like that. Uh, then I met Henrik and uh, I think it was when uh, a series called True Blood has just premiered and they kind of set up a world uh, not similar to real humans but to, they just uh, said this is the world, we leave it uh, and we, we, tell, we tell stories from this world. Uh, that was a key uh, moment when we realized that this is how we're going to do it. We don't, we don't need to explain how these robots have uh, come to life, how they are constructed, and all these uh, things. We just say they are here, <clears throat> now we tell stories about it. Uh, and what attracted me most in, uh, in the concept was the, the possibility of uh, telling Stories. It was like a, a never-ending machine of storytelling. Yes. yes. It, it is a never-ending machine because it has not yet ended. Uh, and how it would look like, I, I didn't know. Uh, we start to uh, exploring this together with uh, SVT and together with uh, the conceptual director Harald. Uh, At first, with this uh, pi uh, short pilot, where we tested uh, the makeup, we tested how they move, uh, how, how a story would be constructed, and so on. May, may I add one thing regarding the, the pilot? Uh, I was at first a bit intimate, uh, intimidated by this uh, approach by saying uh, uh, that you should do a pilot. I, I made a 15 TV series, with an Emmy nominated, whatever, and, and the Lars has written huge success TV series, so we thought, right, but afterwards, that was the best thing that could have happened. And it was not a pilot of one episode, it was seven minutes, just to check how the movements of the U-Bots, how should we create this uh, special universe, which, and, and we realized it's very, very subtle in the acting, and how much is enough, and that's a very thin line. So it was, it was very good, and I was happy that we did that time. And, and so it started very much from there as well. Donc si je comprends bien, il euh, y, a, y a au départ une grande confiance mutuelle, c'est-à-dire que Stéphane, vous faites confiance à une équipe de créateurs que vous connaissez bien, cette équipe de créateurs travaille sur un projet, le définit le plus précisément possible, ensuite elle revient vers vous. Et après, comment, comment ça se passe Il y a beaucoup d'allers-retours sur l'écriture, où vous les, vous les laissez totalement libres de faire ce qu'ils ont à faire, et rendez-vous à la fin de l'écriture, on se parle, on tourne, ou c'est plus compliqué que ça c'est une question, c'est à la fois Stéphane, Henrik et Lars, c'est votre point de vue sur les, les relations avec la chaîne, de votre degré de liberté et d'autonomie. On, on Real Humans, I've been very much involved, much more than I uh, usually am in series, and so I was in the early stage very much involved, I read everything, I gave notes, and, and we had, I, on my staff there are editors, and one of my editors worked alongside me, giving notes, talking to Lars and Henrik, Uh, but but the, 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 those were notes, and, and you were very uh, you listened very clearly. We had long discussions about it in the early stages. Yeah, sure. We, the work with the manuscripts—it's uh, it, a, a long, uh, long and tiresome 
very funny also. Uh, and uh, good notes from Stefan, uh, good notes from Harald, from uh, Henrik, and uh, from the from the other um, script editor uh, who worked with us. Uh, I think the process was slow. We, uh, I had a uh, good time to write through the manuscript. I write every episode maybe six or seven times. Uh, then the last two or three, I think I wrote them. 15 times or something like that. So we were, I, were, I was writing uh, very long into the process. Uh, so that, so that means how long? How long? How long? At, at the very end. From the beginning, beginning to, to the, the production. Too long. What, 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 the, the, the beginning of the writing to the beginning of the shooting? Uh, well, I began writing, began writing uh, in 2009. We, uh, wrote all through 2010 and then we started shooting at April 11 and I wrote until the 1st of September 2012. And then when you were got pregnant, so we had to rewrite it. 2011, sorry. With, at the time when we relighted the show, we had six, uh, script, uh, six scripts in a second version, I think actually episodes one and two in the third version. And we had a storyline that we were very confident with. Just to give you an idea, so six were already, there, there were six scripts. And you wrote, you I rewrote thought. the last two very close to Harl. Because Harl, Harl directed the first four and the last two. And we were, if you were very much involved in the editing of the script of the last two, just before shooting. We ended shooting in November 2011. We aired January. 2012. Ça veut dire, Harald, toi, vous, vous, vous êtes arrivé très, vous êtes arrivé très tôt, Harald, en fait, puisque vous êtes arrivé pour le pilote, vous êtes arrivé au tout début de la conception de la chose, et après, il y a un échange, euh, il y a un échange constant entre vous deux, et euh, dans cet échange, je voudrais savoir si, euh, Lars, vous êtes très, très directif dans l'écriture de vos scénarios, est-ce qu'il y a beaucoup, beaucoup d'indications de jeu, par exemple ou est-ce que vous laissez la latitude au metteur en scène, dès lors que vous avez confiance en lui, qu'il soit une sorte de prolongement de ce que vous désirez Je pense que je suis assez spécifique dans mon manuscript. Je ne sais pas comment Harald. Nous avons une très bonne coopération. Et je suis un nerd sci-fi, donc j'ai vraiment aimé. Et la grande chose avec ça, c'est que c'est la histoire, c'est la histoire qui parle sur l'humain et la philosophie et toutes ces choses. C'est très bon. Extremely good in one other aspect because our budgets in Sweden are not as big as in the States. We have in this science fiction there were no flying cars, it was set in present time. So the only thing we had to do was the U bots, which was very good. This was not answering your question, but this is another point. But, but working with the script, we had a very soft and, and cool, cool relationship, and I could come with ideas, and, and you rewrote some stuff, and we, we, we pushed it back and forth all the time. And Lars is a great writer, so it's, it's one word. I, I picked the scripts that are great, and this was, was a great idea and turned out to be great scripts. Yeah, we, we tried to. I, we worked through the manuscript as long as we needed to, to get to a version uh, that we could agree upon, that wouldn't change during shooting, or, or we would say we just shook hands and said, this is the final version, this is the one that we're going to shoot. But at the same time, we looked for different um, environments, locate different locations where we're going to shoot. And then we found good locations, and Lars rewrote for those locations. So it was a, an ongoing process in, in, in a sense. Yeah, the last two episodes was that was very hectic uh, work. Uh, good to to be able to work that uh, deep into uh, uh, into the shooting process. Uh, it has its qualities, uh, but it's not very good for your nerves. Combien coûte un épisode? Moyen. I have no idea. Is it secret? In yours? A little less. Uh, you're talking about production costs. It's, it's a little less than, than uh, one million, million euros. Do you 
est assez similaire, avec, est assez similaire avec les coûts de production des 52 minutes en France. Donc on est, on est prêt à la production, arrive le moment où mesdames, mesdames vont entrer en scène, puisqu'on passe au casting. Donc euh, là, vous avez un casting assez particulier, puisqu'il y a d'une part des, des acteurs qui jouent, je dirais, de manière traditionnelle, euh, et puis d'autre part, il y a ces fameux humains euh, Donc, euh, comment se passe d'abord le casting C'est-à-dire, est-ce euh, que c'est une décision collégiale pour les personnages principaux Quand je dis collégial, c'est aussi avec la chaîne. Et puis après, comment, comment se passe cet incroyable travail Et ça, je, parle, je, je poserai la question à, surtout à Lisette, qui, qui, qui joue à où il y a, où je, je trouvais qu'il y avait un, un travail de recherche et de, de gestuelle qui était extrêmement, euh, extrêmement convaincant. Donc le casting, euh, c'est toi hein, qui, qui fais le casting au début, ou c'est un casting que vous faites en commun Comment ça se passe well, uh, I, I worked with maybe four or five hundred actors since we are doing the years, but... We had a, a very good uh, casting uh, person at the SVT, which is Anne-Christine Rolien, she's great. And she comes up with new faces. And I had never heard of Lisette before. I know you were famous in, in one TV thing, stuff like that. And <laughs> yeah, on, on stage as well. But, 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 but still, you know, things roll around. So they bring them up and you try to get in new, we want a new faces as well. So, so, that you, so that you don't see, oh, that's the famous actor from that. And then you ruin the feeling of, of this new universe. We wanted it to be a new universe. So it was very different. And then, of course, and that's everybody saw it. They said this super talented in being a new one. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's a, it, she's a dancer from the beginning, so, which is very good for the movement. So, and isolation and movement and stuff like that. There's some tricks that you, you on, the, on, on the test screen, you were just fabulous. But I would say the process is that, that we have a costume director come to the director, shows the, 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 the suggestions, the director comes to the producers, which is Lars, Stephen, and I, and show, and <coughs> suggestions on. It was a huge casting work. Uh, it's about, I think, 80 actors cast in, in, uh, in the series, which... Uh, Many of them has a uh, big, uh, big part in the, the series. Alors Lisette, quand on est une actrice de théâtre, de télévision, de cinéma, vous savez qu'on est habitué à, à exprimer tout un, tout un panel d'émotions euh, et, et, et à mettre en œuvre son expressivité. Quand on vous dit Lisette, vous allez être un robot. Comment ça se passe Comment ça se passe dans sa tête d'un acteur de devenir un robot et d'avoir et d'avoir quand même le sentiment qu'il va falloir faire un travail d'expression euh, intime, comment on fait um, I actually googled a lot because I was interested in um, the way that the robotics is today because I wanted to know um, the technical development in my role the history of um, how does a robot work and even though our habits are um, a few steps ahead than the social robots today, I thought it was good for me and for my character to know that. Et vous avez travaillé avec un, je dirais, un... Est-ce que vous avez travaillé avec un mime, par exemple Est-ce que quelqu'un... Est-ce que la gestuelle... Parce qu'il fallait, il fallait quand même une, je dirais, une uniformité dans la gestuelle des robots. Donc qui, qui faisait travailler tout, tous les acteurs qui, qui incarnent les robots Comment ça se passe, ça We had, we had one workshop with a mimer, um, Ulf, and he showed us uh, how to isolate the movements. And uh, so we had the same frame of, of the hubbards, even though it could be different types of hubbards. Someone older, someone newer, but we wanted to have the same frame, I think. Yes, and on the pilot we had this mime master, Ulf, on the set all the time, so I can focus on the acting, he can focus on the movement. But that turned out to be too much robotic. So we had a session with Ulf where you all had the same training during a day. And then I could talk to them and say, could you have a little bit of more of isolation there? Could I have a, a talk, let's call it talk? So, so, and then I can use that new ter ter terminology to, to express and we could communicate around those, uh, those words to add more or less of being a U-bot, which was very good. And, but on set then, um, We, we realized one very important thing. If two U-boats talk to each other and, and 
I, I set different rules for how they should do a bit. You answer a bit later. You you you, you look between the eyes. You look there. You don't look into the eyes. You can use some small specific things uh, as a help to become a U-bot. But if two U-bots work together and I gave them instructions on how to act, the scene was dead, absolutely dead, because everybody was waiting and it, it became slow. It lost the the dramatic nerve. So what we did was. When we rehearsed with you once, rehearsed as a human being and talk to Lars, Lars talk to Hara as we talk here, as a human, and, and go with the affection of the scene. But then, when you shoot, add a thin layer of you over you. Because then you know the nerve and, and the dynamic, the drama dynamic of the scene. You have, you have felt it as an actor, but then you add the type of just looking between his eyes, adding a little talk, a little isolation, just add a thin line. Et c'est tout ce qu'il faut. Et alors donc, on va parler du contre-champ. Euh, Pierre, vous qui, qui interprétez, euh, je dirais, un rôle traditionnel, euh, quelles sont les difficultés dans, dans un travail avec un acteur qui, lui, lui est dans un code, dans un code de travail euh, qui n'est pas le même qu Qu'est-ce qu que ça provoque en vous de travailler avec quelqu'un qui est extrêmement minimaliste, avec des gestes codifiés, des choses comme ça Est-ce que c'est assez bouleversant, son premier du terme, ou on s'y habitue très vite You, you really get accustomed to it quite fast, actually. And uh, that, surprises, that surprised me that I did, actually. Because uh, it's, a, it's a machine. But it's not. It's reset. My God, how am I going to do this? But the, you know, you, you, just, you just take what you get, as you always do. With another actor, you take what you get. Yeah, but uh, yeah, somehow. En fait, votre rapport, votre rapport avec le partenaire, il incarne un peu le sujet de la série, c'est-à-dire euh, la frontière mouvante entre euh, qu'est-ce qui est humain, qu'est-ce qui ne qu l'est pas, et, 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 et ça génère des sensations. Euh, Lars. Euh, vous dites que vous continuiez à écrire pendant, pendant le tournage. C'était. Est-ce que le fait d'aller sur le tournage, ça modifie votre écriture C'est-à-dire le fait de voir, par exemple, les, les robots incarnés avec leurs leur lentilles, leurs costumes, leurs gestuels. Est-ce que tout à coup, ça infléchit votre manière d'écrire Est-ce est qu'il y a un aller-retour entre ce qui est en train de se réaliser et l'écriture for the new bots, the, the robots in the series. Uh, watching the day it takes, uh, it, it uh, affects you when you're writing, when you're still writing. So, uh, but it, it, uh, it changed also when you see a, a, an actor role that is really emerging and you see, wow, this is, need to use this person more because it, uh, gives a lot of uh, energy to the story, uh, I do. So, uh, to write while shooting, it's always reflected in writing. Bien, donc, donc euh, est-ce que le, est que le, le montage commence pendant le tournage, ou est-ce que vous terminez le tournage et le montage commence ensuite During the shooting, the, the ending starts, which is very good because then you can go back to scenes and see did this work really between the actors and uh, the, uh, the real humans and the and the robots, which was very good to have an upcoming all the time to see the scenes how they work. Donc comment ça se passe, euh, Aral Toi tu fais tu fais la pro le premier montage avec ton, ton monteur ou ta monteuse et tu fais un premier un, 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 un premier montage et après tu montres ça à à, à tes producteurs et à la chaîne, ou euh, dès le départ, vous êtes, euh, il y a un travail collégial sur le montage, un peu comme il y a eu un travail collégial sur la préparation Non, nous faisons une version first, et puis nous montrons aux gens de truth sayers qui apprennent toutes les questions que j'ai essayé de pousser. Qu'est-ce que c'est de cette partie Je sais, je sais. <laughs> but but it's, uh, it's, it's good to make a first version first, but usually you know what's missing. It's too long maybe, and, and the question can be, what has to go away? I'd like to have everything there, but Stefan wants to have 60 minutes, so 
something has to go. What has to go? And that's you, have, you need eyes. We even had we had even had showings for audiences that didn't know anything about it to see what worked, what didn't work, which was good. Et, et donc si à un moment il y a il y a une discorde euh, qui a le final cut si à un moment vous n'êtes pas d'accord sur une scène sur sur un enchaînement et que et que personne ne veut lâcher comment ça se passe I would say the story does as a matter of fact because you never get away from, I think you never had an argument about anything uh, I, I, I mean a hard argument <laughs> well, it is uh, formally I think it's uh, according to, to Swedish uh, Law. uh, laws, uh, uh, it's, it's the director uh, when we are doing two series and, and uh, feature films. But in, in practice, it's, it's the broadcaster if we get to the situation that there's a conflict. But uh, as, as I was saying, it's, it's, it's very subtle. There are, there are examples, of course, in, in Swedish history and there, there has been conflicts. Say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but well, because uh, our director program uh, actually delegates uh, the responsibility to John. Actually, if there's a lawsuit or something that would come out of the hearing, I would go to jail. Vous <laughs> vous savez que ces journées ces journées sont consacrées à tous les créateurs de séries. Dans les créateurs de séries, on a évidemment inclus les musiciens. Je voudrais savoir à quel moment, à quel moment vous, vous commencez à penser à la musique ou à travailler sur la musique qui est extrêmement importante dans, dans cette atmosphère particulière de série. May I just uh, point of clarification, uh, uh, final cut clarification. In my, uh, my uh, when I make a feature film, there's always in the, in the, in the, the contract saying I have the final cut. Honestly speaking, I don't know what it says in the, in the, in the contract of the SVT, but, but, but usually you have the final cut as a director in Sweden, but when you send the programs away to Germany or you recap, then you have no rights. I think Stefan was talking about if there is a scene uh, or sequence which he, he can't show on television, uh, that he can say no to it. In the, in the contracts that we, uh, not that we did with Hara, uh, he, he did not have the final cut. Formally, but never mind. <laughs> Donc la musique, music. Non. Euh, à, à quoi, euh, comment comment euh, choisissez-vous euh, À quel moment le musicien intervient Est-ce qu'il intervient sur le premier montage d'image Est-ce que vous lui demandez de travailler déjà sur une atmosphère au moment du scénario Est-ce que c'est un élément qui participe de l'ensemble dès le début ou il est ajouté à la fin puisqu'on sait qu'il peut y avoir les deux types de, de fonctionnement in this case, he, he got on board uh, at uh, the end of the process. Uh, I always listen to music when I write. Uh, that's not the music we can use for the, for the final series. Then the editors, they use their music uh, when they edit. And that's not the music we can use in the series as well. And then the compu composer uh, comes aboard. We get, he came uh, in the during the uh, final editing period and started composing uh, all of the music for the series. But the final editing of the first episode, which means that in the editing of the later episodes there was, uh, there was music that was available and that we wanted yes. to use. And, and slowly the editors could shift from uh, the, the, the music that they just picked into this music because it became more and more Vous avez mis en place un, vous avez mis en place un, un système dramatique tellement riche que vous pouvez imaginer de nombreuses saisons là-dessus. Euh, comment vous envisagez les choses C'est-à-dire que est-ce que la commande de la suite s'est faite très très tôt Est-ce que vous avez attendu le, le succès public Est-ce que vous avez déjà des projections sur l'avenir C'est-à-dire est-ce que vous voulez durer le plus longtemps possible Ou est-ce que dans votre tête il y aura, il y aura une finitude Est-ce que, est que vous avez parlé de ça aux comédiens, par exemple quand, quand, quand les comédiens, quand vous avez été choisi, est-ce qu'on vous a dit qu'il y avait la possibilité C'est plusieurs questions. Euh, il y avait la possibilité de faire plusieurs saisons, voilà, ce qu'on appelle chez nous des rôles récurrents, euh, qui, qui est un, un type de rôle un peu particulier. Donc déjà sur la décision de la suite et puis après. Positive for sex season, uh, and we we, we, we it in the sense 
from SAP's perspective, but there is now a process of financing it and uh, doing a deal together with Matador for a second season. When it comes to the actors in their contracts, we did not have an option for a second season. We sometimes do that, but we did not in this case. But Henry was in touch with the... We tried to inform everybody that the intention was to have at least one and two more seasons. But, but there is never a guarantee. Is that right? We tried to be informed. Yeah, we were told uh, before the summer, some, we received a letter somewhere in the, the fall. No, no, the, 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 the spring. That it might be a second season. We haven't signed any contract yet with them, so let's not do this right now. Let's <laughs> start negotiating. Bien, mais je voulais personnellement, je voulais vous remercier pour ce panorama. Je crois que ce serait intéressant maintenant de passer, de passer la parole à la salle s'il y a des questions spécifiques et ça enrichira, j'en suis certain, l'échange. Merci, merci beaucoup à tous et continuons un petit peu avec la salle. Euh, Est-ce que euh, dès le départ, vous étiez parti sur 10 épisodes euh, pour, euh, pour une saison Est-ce que donc financièrement, vous saviez que euh, ça pouvait fonctionner sur 10 épisodes Pourquoi pas 12 Pourquoi pas 8 Pourquoi 10 Et voilà, Et économiquement, comment c'est viable Oui, nous savions que nous voulions 10 parce que dans notre drama strategy, pour. Uh, Well, at least at that time, and it's still actually the same. Uh, we, have, we wanted to uh, have an output of 4 times 10 times 60. Our slots are 60 minutes. Uh, so we knew we wanted 10 from the beginning. We were looking at different uh, possible projects for the January broadcast on Sundays at 9. And we had a slot, and we had 10 weeks. Deux épisodes, deux épisodes par soir ou un épisode par soir Deux épisodes par soir ou un seul épisode par soir C'est vrai. Nous avons fait une petite chose spéciale quand il s'agit de les humains réels. Nous avons eu deux épisodes back to back sur le samedi, sur le premier samedi. Donc il s'agit en fait pour neuf semaines. Mais notre main idée est d'avoir un épisode par week. Mais nous voulions essayer cette partie, cette publicité stunt. And partly we, we, we really wanted people to catch on really good. We had a weeks of discussions around this, uh, but as we, we had a possibility to postpone the premiere date one week, we had to, and we actually needed another week to finalize the final mix as well. Oui, bonjour, Sylvie, uh, uh, scriptwriter. Je voudrais savoir deux choses. Du part, quelle est l'audience que vous attendez sur Real Humans? à quel moment ça marche, vous avez décidé que ça marche ou que ça ne marche pas en termes de quantité de public. Et l'autre question s'adresse au concepteur. Pourquoi est-ce que vous êtes coproducteur Est-ce que tous les auteurs deviennent coproducteurs Quelle est la raison qui vous a amené à être coproducteur want and need for our drama shows. It's just that Sunday night when we had the two episodes was the same night that TV4, whom I talked about earlier, started their Wallander series. So we went up against Wallander. They are 90 minutes and they but they air on TV4 they have their commercial channel but between nine and ten they send the first forty two minutes of it and then they have a news break and then they come back up to the newspaper. So the competition was very, very tough. Uh, in regards to coming up against Wallander, we had an, uh, an audience share of 20% in average. We actually want at least 25, 30, but we were very happy with having that much, uh, that big an audience against Wallander. And the response, the media response, or in the, the press coverage was enormous in Sweden. We had headlines on the sport pages 
where they referred to human uh, to humans and real humans. So it made a very big impact on, on, in Sweden. So we count that as a, a very good response, even though we, the actual numbers of audience was a little too low. Twenty percent. It means how many people? It means uh, a, an average of eight hundred and fifty thousand in Sweden. But the, the, the sh I mean, I say twenty percent share. The rating, the average, is then ten or nine percent rating. Nine percent rating. Share twenty. Okay. Thank you. Henry, can you ask pourquoi, why co-producers? Why did we become co-producers? It came natural. Uh, we had the idea. We had the concept. Uh, uh, it was produced in-house in SVT, but we wanted uh, to have a part of it, uh, SVT wanted us to have a part of it, so uh, it was natural to, be to become co-producers. We have also uh, invested a lot in the, in the development of the series, that we wanted to have uh, ownership in, in the... In the it, means that you, it means that you have invested, it means that you have uh, paid for it without SVT? Yeah, in a, in a way we paid for it because we have work for free to develop it. Until when? We, we didn't work for free, but, but I mean, as we tried to explain, it's a long process. We worked for, for with, it was, it was several people involved for several years. And, and we uh, financed parts of, of, of the development. So we had no ownership there. Uh, to be a co-producer is, is, uh, is important for us by several reasons. It, it gives us uh, kind of a power when it comes to the production. To, uh, when we were discussing who makes the decisions. Well, as a co-producer, you have the possibility to be in all, all, the, all discussions. And there is a, a financial reason as well, of course, uh, to own as much as possible. You don't own it all. Uh, Puisqu'on parle, puisqu parle de coproduction, euh, Stéphane, vous avez les droits de diffusion pour combien de diffusions ou combien d'années Est-ce euh, est que Matador vous a cédé les droits euh, Quels sont à peu près, je dirais, les, les, est-ce que ces deux diffusions et après les droits sont à nouveau libres Ou est-ce que c'est -ce est plus complexe que ça Puisque vous êtes copropriétaire en fait, entre Matador et SVT, vous êtes copropriétaire de la série, et vous, vous achetez combien de diffusions Votre accord, il porte sur combien de diffusions I don't really want to go into the actual deal, but one could say that when it comes to the, the, the property, and we, we have a 50-50 split. Uh, we own it together. Uh, and the, I mean, the, the, the actual deal that we have is a result of negotiations, because, of course, between me and Henrik, but I, I hope that we were very satisfied with the situation. Of course, from Matador's point of view, they would have, of course, wanted to be able to bring in more money from their side to put more of the ready-made, uh, Regiment, but the, the property in itself, of course, it will always be Lars's and not the Lars. We, it's their property in that sense. But with the, 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 we have a we have distribution deal with Shine International. We have a remake deal with one of Shine's companies, Curious, with them, the, them, and um, we, we do this together with Matador. Another question. Yeah. How much is uh, one episode? Un million d'euros à peu près, la réponse est. The writing of it. For the writer. For the script writer. Well, I get as a script writer. Well, I'm, I'm a co producer. Yeah. But as a script writer, usually, if you are uh, not co producer. Uh, there, there is a, a union standards. Uh, the union. I, I don't have in my head what, what uh, the piece for script is in Sweden. In every battle, the standard DC comes up much higher, of course. Uh, I'd say that on a series, uh, I'll say a series of 10 episodes, it's between, uh, per episode, the author gets between 15,000 and 20,000 euros per episode. Okay. Depends on what you describe. Yeah, but I, I was talking about the standard minimum uh, levels. Minimum, what was it? Yeah. There's a, uh, the writer's guild of Sweden. Uh, so you, you uh, are guaranteed to get uh, about 20 to uh, 25 thousand euros. 
third episode. And then royalties and so on comes uh, on top of that. Les comédiens. Et pour les, est-ce que pour les comédiens c'est la même chose, c'est-à-dire est-ce qu'il y a une grille des salaires minimum Et je voudrais savoir si en Suède vous, vous bénéficiez de, de systèmes de protection sociale dans les périodes de chômage, par exemple. Pour les comédiens, est-ce qu'il y a un salaire minimum par jour euh, à la télévision, au cinéma C'est-à-dire est-ce qu'il y a des accords Yes, of course, you have standard agreements, but um, it's always. Uh a negotiation. Um, and in this case, most of the actors, I guess, was uh, on daily fee. Um, I think me and the set was the only two uh, actresses going on monthly because of the number of days we were shooting. Mm -hmm. So, I, and I don't have the, the numbers either for, for no. Et donc, dans les périodes où vous ne travaillez pas, est-ce qu'il y a une protection sociale, l'équivalent de ce qu'on appelle l'assurance chômage en France, où au bout d'un certain temps sans travailler, les gens trouvent de l'argent du gouvernement Non, si vous êtes en pas durant un processus comme ça, ou une production comme ça, oui. Mais il y a tellement de règles autour de ça. So, um, again. If you're unemployed in Sweden, you have social security. Yes. That you get a small amount of money. It doesn't, if you're an actor, if you're whatever you did. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, how many days of shooting do you have per episode? And do you cross board episodes? Or do you shoot one episode after the other? The first four episodes, we had 63 days of shooting to do them. And we had a few extra days just to get into it. And then also we had the opportunity of having some second unit, uh, unit could take some small parts as well. We cross bonding, cross bonding. You cross bond. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 we crossed between four, yes, absolutely. Otherwise, it's very rational. So you cross bond the four, four, first four? four and then a second block of four with another director, uh, Levan Arkin, and then I came back and made the two blocks. So I could prepare them during the shoot. And the working hours in Sweden is about eight hours? Yeah. Inclu including transportation. <laughs> if that seems to be a lot of days. Bringing so the gear, getting gear out. Days. So the, sh the days are short, but sometimes you can have some transportation outside. You have the double rigging teams for the electricians and stuff like that. And you can make more efficient, but don't go too far away from from uh, the, the, the the office. Never shoot outdoor after September because it's dark. <laughs> but if you've seen real humans, you've seen a lot of the okay. environment around the Swedish television. But but, but the honest, honest speaking, we took we, we actually traveled in some cases. We needed we needed unique places as well, so we had to deal with that. We have to go. We added some overtime and stuff like that, but uh, it worked. Like that. Yes. Uh, did you use you got in the crew? <laughs> uh, sorry? Did you use you got in the crew? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're all you got. Yeah. Including me. Okay. okay. And that's a real question. Uh, je voudrais savoir si uh, le film, enfin, la série commence par, uh, par un genre qui est un peu de l'horreur. On est sur des codes du film d'horreur au début. Un petit peu. Et uh, après, on bascule dans une chronique familiale de la relation qu'on a avec ces robots, et je voulais savoir si c'était un choix délibéré de l'auteur de mettre ce suspense et ce genre un peu thriller horreur dès le départ, et de le mélanger avec euh, cette chronique familiale de, du contact humain avec des robots, ou euh, si ça a été une volonté de la chaîne de commencer sur quelque chose qui va être très accrocheur, entre guillemets, qui t'a basculé dans un autre genre. It was a choice. Uh, I would like, uh, I wanted to write a uh, multi-genre uh, series with the uh, combining comedy, uh, horror, as you said, uh, suspense and drama, uh, family drama, it, into one pot and make it, uh, make it uh, a certain tone in it that you can, that these genres could be very close to each other and it just needs to 
that it did. And, uh, and I think uh, Harold uh, executed that very well. Thank you. I, I, the idea was, I, I love this multi-plot, but it, of course it can be a bit tricky to move around it, but also the humor that was into it. So you, 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 you go between all these feelings, and also I wanted to have the tonality of, you never know what's around the corner feeling. A lynch, kind of lynch feeling, that, that something, is, something is lurking around the corner all the time. You never know what you're doing. But, but the, the question, I think the question was, uh, was put due to the fact that we, for the first three and a half minutes, actually have a sort of uh, action, suspense, crime scenery, and we had lots of discussion how to start the show. Um, we ended this way, uh, I can't really re remember all the terms in those discussions, but one thing uh, that maybe it's in insight now, but is that we actually went out on a slot where people expect to see crime and suspense. That could be one answer. I remember it was Piotr actually, yeah. uh, who, who one of the executives who said it needs a, a, a tougher start, and I, I think we really felt that as well. We wanted something more in the, in the beginning because it's a slow start to start up the episode with uh, introducing all the characters. You need something in the beginning that holds on, that, that, that keeps the public still at the television after all the all the introduction. Yeah, uh, that's true. Uh, we worked very hard uh, and uh, a long time on, on the start. Uh, it's good to, to be begin something with a situation, with something action. You, you just be, as, as an audience, you draw, draw it draws into the uh, into the story, so you don't start with a lot of uh, exposition and stuff. And we put a lot of shooting days and, and, and money into the first episode, the first start, the action start to make the, to look good. J'ai une autre question. Le U-Bot dit dès le début, dès les premières minutes, je, je t'aime. Donc euh, j'ai l'impression que la, la philosophie de la série tourne autour de la capacité de, des machines à avoir des sentiments. Alors moi, j'ai pas vu toute la série, donc je ne peux, peux pas en juger, mais est-ce que ça a été une problématique essentielle pour vous est-ce que c'est une décision un peu romancée de l'homme de mettre des sentiments chez les, chez les machines Et euh, est-ce que ça a été le sujet de, de grandes discussions entre vous Est-ce que c'était fondamental par rapport à l'idée de départ de cette série uh, Yeah, this U-Box, to be specific, these are free U-Box uh, that says I love you. Uh, so in our world, uh, the free hood robots are uh, capable of expressing feelings. You, you don't really know do, do they feel these feelings, but they, they can surely uh, pretend them uh, and express them. Um, uh, it's a bit romantic. Yes. And, and what, 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 what is AI? What is intelligence? In, in the 19th century you said someone who can do mathematics, that's intelligence. <laughs> that the calculator came. Then someone said, well, chess, that's, if you can play chess, that's intelligence. And then the computer, Deep Blue, came, and, and you know, the, and everything is history. Then you said, Jeopardy, that is, that's complicitly, yeah, like only human can win in Jeopardy. Now a computer has won. So we soon there, it goes, it grows exponentially. So just around the corner, we have it, we have u -bots. But it, it's an interesting question, because it uh, points out one, one of the discussions we have uh, at the, really at the beginning uh, of the development of, of the scripts and of the series, uh, the reaction you get when you tell some, someone it's a, a drama about robots is that they well, oh, it's cold, it's non-emotional, it's, uh, it's nothing. I don't want to see it. It's just not interesting. Uh, so uh, it was important to make it very emotional. Because it, what, it is an emotional drama, uh, so it's the contra, it's very emotional. That's maybe why we, we had this love scene, uh, this expression of love in, in, in the right of the beginning of the And of course, that's the, one of the main things in the series that ends in the, the last of the episode, the episode. Then you, oops, oops, but you know what? You will be, you're prof professionals, you know, <laughs> that's we got, it's going to be ca catched up in the end. Thank you and congratulations for this great show. I loved it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Bien, mais si vous êtes d'accord, je crois qu'on peut remercier vraiment chaleureusement, dire toute notre admiration pour votre travail. Merci de vous déplacer, c'est un honneur pour nous. Merci.